Okay, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how to use Cyberboard properly. In the first video, we showed you just minimal way to use it. We don't have to learn much and uh, super simple. But to use it properly, the key is you have to create what's called a game, a Cyberboard game. So once you have the program in the game box of the game you want to play, run, open the program, go File, New. This is absolutely crucial. You have to create a game. New game. Don't choose scenario. It's counterintuitive, but scenario seems to be for scenario design. So you choose a new game, go to the, where your game box is. Depending which game you chose, there's going to be various scenarios. Sometimes there's only one. Some games don't have scenarios. But let's say we're going to play the campaign game. We choose it. All right, that's the game. You're always going to get this. This is how many files it's going to create. You can go here and change the name or add append the name, let's say. To show you just in my case, let's say I'm going to be, and then you have to go update name, and I'm going to play an American player, and his name's going to be Bubba. All right, we update the name, we're good. Now it's going to ask me, what do I want to call this game? Doesn't matter as long as it's not one of these exact same file names. Let's say it's going to be called the Empire of the Sun demo game. Then what's going to do? It's going to create a file for every player and a file called spectator. Um, spectator is fairly useless. Uh, then you're going to go, okay, distribute them as required. Now, whoever's playing each side needs to get the file for themselves. So you're going to go here. Uh, I've got this clogging up some stuff from previous, previous attempts at this. Um, I'm going to just quickly delete these. Okay, so here is our game. You can tell they're game files because they end in game. Uh, the files are always going to end in either GBX for the main game box, GSN for scenario. You don't want to mess with these. Uh, then any games you have will end in game. So what I would do is I would take, first of all, the spectator file. I don't need for anyone. I'll just get rid of it. Then I would take my allied file and I would email it to my allied player. And I'm the Japanese. And we're ready to go. When I'm ready to play the game, I will go File, Open, ETS Demo Game, I'm the Japanese player. You're always going to get this. Some games this is blank. Then there's going to be under here various things sometimes. If, uh, like in Here I Stand, there's sub maps or cards where you keep track of stuff. They'll be on there, but whatever you want to access, you double click on it and then it'll become a tab down here. You'll always have this main tab. Here there's only the map. So there we go. We got the map. This is the pieces at the beginning. Uh, you start with two cards, so they left these laying on the map. To, to view them, highlight them and flip them. Highlight them and flip them. Okay? Then you want to open all your counter trays. A, B, markers. Here's a good case. Sometimes they get squished like this, so you have to go here, make the cursor change, go like that. And you can resize them all that way. Uh, we won't really need to mark her so much right now. So one of these in the tray is going to be my hand. Japanese current hand. There it is. The reason you want to have multiples open is one of these is going to be the cards. They're right here. Now you can right click and turn all pieces over and you'll see what's in the deck. Now you're going to deal yourself forget. I think in this game you start with five cards. However many cards you're supposed to have, you're going to go and just deal. Now, notice like here's Colonel Tsugi. I'm going to drag this in here, but that doesn't mean I get this card. It randomizes it as I leave. So I go like this, and what did I actually get? I got Grand Escort Command. Okay. Now, it takes nothing to start your turn. It's, it's started, as long as you're moving pieces, it's recording it. It's just not saving it until you tell it to do that. So in this game, I believe the first thing is uh, Operation Z, the attack on Pearl Harbor. I do that, I play it, then there should be a removed pile. This is the removed Japanese card pile. I put it in there. Now my opponent, oh, this is important. My opponent cannot see these cards. He'll see the, the back side of them until I release ownership. Uh, so I have to go here. And that's ghosted out. That means the at-start cards had their ownership released. So he can't see them. 
but if, when the next time when I play a card, I will drag it out, and even though I can see it, my opponent cannot see it. It says owned by Japanese player, so he'll just see the back. So you got to go here and release ownership. Now he'll be able to see it on his file. Uh, when I play the card, I put it in a remove pile. Put it in a remove pile. I can always get him back out. So I've played my card. Now I have to make my move. Everything will be recorded. So draw a box around it. Here's this task force. I could just go like this and yeah, it depends how detailed you like. And that's where it's going to go. And that's that. But I could also take this. Let's say I don't want the land. Oh, yeah, the land unit could not actually move. So let's take say I take the two ships, highlight it, then I go up here, begin plotted move. Click that. Now, boom, 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 boom. That's the way it's moving. Okay, that's the way I want it to move. I accept it. And it goes there. If I didn't like it and wanted to redo it, I push the X and only this one piece bounces back. If I don't like my whole turn, I don't want to accept it, I can push this and it bounces back to the beginning of my turn. And then whatever else I want to move, if you click too much, you're going to get that. Say these things move around here. You don't usually need to do the plotted moves. It depends on your plan and how accurate stuff has to be. You can write little notes if you double click on them. Uh, if you want to see what's in a stack, you just draw a box around it and it'll appear here. Uh, in the last video, I'm just going to go over all these commands and show you what they do and what they're good for. But basically, you make your move, plot it or teleport, whatever you prefer. And then the important part is that you go here, send recording to file. Call it this. Normally, you type it in. Uh, and I say save. Yeah, in this case, you're not going to get that here. Um, Generally, you just say OK and leave it blank. But if you want to have a record of your game and what cards you played in what order, let's say I played AIE Operation 1 card. Just, I could detail what I plan to do or whatever. Most people don't bother filling it in. Then you're going to take that little file, which you now find in your folder here. Well, it should be here huh? on my desktop wherever you keep them. And I recommend really keeping it all in the same place. Because if you get a message that says, like, often you'll, it'll say, hey, I can't find your game box. You just have to point it where the game box is. But if it's in the same folder of what you're trying to call up, it'll automatically find it. So here's this. I will either put this in my Dropbox, which automatically transfers it to my opponent, or I will email it to him. All right. He, in turn, let's say, now I'm my now I am the uh, American player, and let's close this. I don't need to save it. I've already saved it. So here's the American player. Here's our demo game. Now he would actually open uh, his file. is going to be slightly different in that he could not access these cards. He could not see even see them. But so here we are my turn, I see this fu this one, load recorded move. These are the two key things. Load to see what the current move is, and this one, send recording to file, which is only active if you actually made a move. As soon as I move something, it will become active. Now, I go like this. Okay, the move's been loaded, and I can either step through it step by step, or just jump to the end. So let's step through it and see what I did. See, this, I did this with the cards. He saw your opponent sees what you do. He would not be able to see the cards in your hand. The only reason is because I'm playing this off the Japanese file. So there you go. There we go. Everything's moved. He sees it step by step. When he's done moving, it grids out, and you have to accept it. If you don't accept it, it jumps back to the beginning. So I accept it. This is now part of the game state. Whenever I open the game, we'll be here. You don't have to play it again. Now the American would do his thing. Uh, and, and then again, send re uh, you have to move something before you can do anything, before that will become active. See, as soon as you move a couple things, it becomes active. Send recording to file. You would call it uh, UTS US turn one, round one. That probably should have said Japanese in it somewhere. 
and then you, the files are tiny, uh, just a couple Ks, so they're super easy to email, and you have a whole record of your game right here uh, as it goes on. If you type in the name, you'll see what cards were played turn by turn, and you can very easily replay it. You could replay the whole game super easily because uh, it'll automatically wrote the, load the next little connection. So there's going to be a third video in which I just discuss some of the features up here. Nothing, no big deal. But the key that I want to leave you with is once you have the game box and you have the program, the key is you have to create a game. File, new, game. Once you have a game, all this stuff becomes active. When you make your move, you send a recording to file, load recorded move file. And when you, uh, rather, this rather, send recording to file. And when you get a new file, you load it and then you play through it. That's really the key to it. That's all. Thanks.